what you can do and what you cannot do and what you can influence and do you have the wisdom to differentiate that? Fellow CEOs and entrepreneurs, during these seasons of coronavirus, I know many are very stressed out and worries. 99% of the market is in fact um, panicked and don't know what to do uh, for their business in this season. Therefore, last week, we bring together all our top coaches and consultants to have a brainstorming session. How can we give a simple, practical, yet transformative solution to all businesses? So these are the framework we will share with you that we believe it can transform your businesses if you faithfully apply it. So these are the things that we will start with. I've been following us for a season. You know that there are three sets required to achieve any success. And in this season of time, there's no different. There are three sets that require. The first set is this. First is always start with your mindset. So in this season, what is the mindset that you need to have? Second is this, skill set. What are the skill set you need to have or need to develop in this season? Last but not least, tool set. What are the tool set that you need to overcome this season? Of course, in this short video, I may not have time to go deep into tool set, but I believe with the right mindset and skill set, it can bring your business to the next level in this season. Or in other words, from being affected badly to become neutralized or even you can do well or transform your business during this season. So we came up with the three strategies for businesses during this restriction movement order. So meaning that what are the things that you can do? Like I said, first is we start with the mindset. So what is the mindset? It's really what do you think? Most people are so worried, don't know what to do right now. But this is a time where you need to stay calm, stay still and think of what can you do and what you cannot do. A lot of things that we cannot do. The virus is spreading, some of them are not um, preventing this and people are dying. But this, a lot of things that we cannot do anything about it. But there are something that we definitely can do. So what can you do and what you cannot do and what you can influence. The key is that do you have the wisdom to differentiate it and have the discipline to focus on what you can do and what you can influence. And second, you need to first identify where are you right now in terms of the impact level of your business. So I break into few levels of impact of business. How does this coronavirus impacting you? What I'll do is I start with the first level of impact. First, we want to determine what is the impact level of this coronavirus impacting your business. It starts from level zero, which means this virus has little or no impact to your business. Some businesses currently they are not affected. What I'm saying is the next, at least for the next 100 days, you are not affected. Of course, if this virus is going to extend for the next three months, six months, or even one year, every business will be impacted badly. But I'm just saying for the, at least for the next 100 days or the next three months, how are you going to affect by this? So probably some business are still little to no impact. Or you could be level one. What do you mean by level one? Somehow you say, okay, I, I cannot say that we have no impact. We definitely are impacted, but I cannot say that it's seriously impacted. So level two, level two are pretty at seriously impacted. It's very bad, the business come down uh, very, very badly, 50% and below. Level three is that this is killing my business. So you are dropped 80% and below. First, you need to identify which level I'm at. Of course, in this season, they are also, I call it level negative one, which are businesses that are benefited from this season. Like, uh, for example, your grocery store, the mask, the hand spray, sanitizer. So they are definitely businesses who are their business actually shoot up during this season, sterilizer. So first, you need to identify which impact level are you at at this point of time. Why is that so important? Because if you are at negative one and zero, yep, you would think, yeah, it's great. It's good for me. I have no problem. Um, I can stand for another three, four months. But I want you to think of how can you help businesses who are at two or three? Because this virus season, if it got prolonged, every business will have been problem. Even you are at right now, negative one or even zero. If you prolong for another six months, one year, everyone will be at level three. So if you are at negative one or level zero, then you think of who are your clients who are at level two or three that you can give some help, be it um, financially or even physically or even in knowledge wise, how can you help them share the burden? But if you are in level two or three, Look for someone who are at level negative one or zero that you can seek help. So this is the first, identify where is your business impact level right now. So next thing, even before we go to the three specific strategy for all businesses, 
we will want to focus on this action that you can do for all businesses and we'll make it very, very simple. So as simple as plus, minus, times and divide. So what can you do in this season? So this is apply for all businesses. Every business should add to minus to times to multiply and to divide. So what is something that you need to plus to add in this season of time? So I put in the four areas. First, of course, you need to think of things to how can I increase my revenue? That is for sure. How can I increase my revenue? What kind of service can I add on to? Of course, later in the next part, I will share specifically what strategy you can apply. But you start to think what are the extra revenue I can think of. Of course, what is something that can minus? Of course, the first thing you think of is cost. How can I reduce my cost? ethically and moral, uh, morally right so I'm not asking you to reduce your salary of your staff or try to undercut your supplier but in this season what is something that practically you can reduce the cost and third what is something you need to times in this season of time you need to times your learning you need to increase your learning at this time there's a lot of business not in activity but can you take this time to improve your business your processes your knowledge so you need to times learning and what do you need to divide burden is there any burden you can divide up? Because for most CEO and entrepreneurs, all the burden you carry on to yourself. But is there some burden that you can share with your team or your supplier or your customer or any of your stakeholders or even family members? Is there any uh, burden that you can share? So second thing is this, what you need to add. So at this season of time, everyone is spreading fake news, negativity, but can you be positive? Like I said, it always starts with the mindset. 99% of people are stuck in the negative mode, but can you be positive? Can you add on more, even more positivity in this season of time? And of course, what do you reduce? Obviously, negativity. When you saw a news that is negative, can you just hold on to it and not share it out? And not be one of the person who add extra negativity. And when you meet your friends, uh, even through Zoom or through online, can you reduce some negativity? That is something that we ask for. Third, what do you do times? Flexibility. Can you add a times? Extra multiply your flexibility at this time. Maybe that's why I say, oh, can you just meet face to face? But now can you be more flexible? Can you meet online? But I never have I never do any meeting online before. But now can you be more flexible? And what are the services? Last time you cannot do this, but can you be more flexible at this point of time? So you need to multiply your flexibility and divide. Of course, this time is what I mentioned to you before, which is responsibility. Again, just like burden particularly of responsible can you divide it out not first of internal team then look for external support as well can you divide the responsibility at this point of time third what is something you need to add on this in this season of time of course you need to add value think of how can you add value again when I, at every point i mentioned you need to focus on internal and external not only one so how can you add value internally and how can you add value externally to your client, to your uh, stakeholder, and even to the public? How can you add value? In fact, what we are doing this on this uh, video itself is adding value. Um, like I said, we had a brainstorm before even the government has, has ordered the movement restriction order. We call for our team to meet up. So we think hey, we want to think of a framework solution, simple, that it can apply for our client. At first, we thought just do it for our clients. but. After all, I say, hey, this time, this is serious. If every business affected, uh, the whole world will come down, the whole Malaysia will go to the level impact tree. So I said, we will want to do it, with, uh, we want to share it with all. So we put into writing, we put into visual, and then we also we contacted our, uh, our video partner, Firming Arts, to do this together so that we can share this and help more businesses to overcome in this season of time. So we want to add value at this season of time. And second, we want to, what do you want to reduce? Wastage. So at this point of time, yeah, you want to increase value, but in the same time, how can you reduce the wastage? So what are the wastage you have in your businesses or in your whole processes or in your value chain? So because over the time, we are so busy running our business day to day. And you know, over the time, you can add on so many things in your business or so many extra processes that is redundant. So how can you reduce wastage at this point of time? But you see some business, the wastage is the one key area in their expenses especially for F&B. So wastage is one area, if they can save, it can directly impact their bottom line. But if they, and it also in the vice versa, it can also make them not profitable or losing money just because of the wastage. So this is the time that you think of, what is the wastage I can reduce? And third, multiply. This is the time you want to multiply your engagement. When I say engagement, it doesn't need to be face-to-face, -face, especially in this time of restriction order, movement restriction order. I'm not asking you to face-to-face -face engagement, but how can you engage again internally? You can through Zoom, 
when was the last time you have a chance to sit down with your head of department one to one having a heart to heart talk be it business different area of life business career their goal their dream their vision their challenges so now i'm not asking you to sit down you can do it over the zoom call over the online whatsapp call or facetime so having a good time this is a 14 great time 14 day good time for you to really understand them and plan their career for the next level so increase your engagement and also externally what about customer when was the last time you meet your customer uh, one to one and sit down one hour have a good time understanding does your service and product really help them what are the challenges they face and what are the other services or product or solution you can add value to them you can help them with you ha may have it right now the capacity or you may not have in terms of competency and capacity but if you understand them well enough you can develop that and that is always the key of innovation the best Innovation doesn't mean that you sit at home and think of a best solution and create a solution. It's to understand the needs and desire of your customer. And this is the best time to do that. So multiply your engagement, payment. When I say divide payment, I'm not asking you to share the payment, but same externally and internally as well. So if your client couldn't pay one shot this time, can you divide it out? Ask them to pay in installment. Same goes to your payment. So most people say, I cannot pay now. I just want to hold everything. Yeah, you may not be able to pay one shot, but can you divide the payment and pay in installment? So that is what I'm asking for. Because now the, the whole Malaysia and whole world is either they give or they don't give. So the whole, all resources is stuck. But if you think of, let's divide our payment. I may not be able to pay one shot, but can we pay in installment at this time? And also, I may not receive one shot, but can I receive in installment this time? It takes someone to initiate this first, else everyone will be stuck. So divide your payment. Okay, last. The fourth point, what do you want to add is this. And this is one of the most important at this season. Everyone is losing trust to each other. So how can you increase trust in this season? So when I say trust, it can also mean transparency. For F, again, it's internal and external. For food and beverages, you see now they focus so much on the traceability. How do you trace um, the where the food come from and people who deliver the food they also put into the uh, the how what is the temperature of this person when they deliver the food their body temperature who are the person and how they deliver the food and where does this food come from and being transparent and this time really helps a lot to increase trust so even internally this is the time when the moment the government announced the movement restriction order so many entrepreneurs call me and ask me hey can i pay unpaid leave or can i just reduce the salary and all that so all of them are telling the same thing. This is the time that you do trust. I said, how much can you save by taking unpaid leave or minusing their salary? Does it save your business? The answer is no, for sure. So, but because they are panicked, they are nervous, first thing they do, they want to save. But I said, this will not save your business. In fact, this will kill your business because they will lose trust in you during this time. But this is the time that you build trust with your team. You say, this is a time where we are not minus salary, we will not cut your leave, um, but we want to go through this together. This is a time that you build trust with your team. And what do you want to minus? Also, very relevant, self-centeredness, or the other word, selfish. Because this is a time that people try to protect themselves. They try to hold on their cash, they don't do this, and then they protect themselves. So everyone is being selfish at this time. You just go to a grocery store, everyone is buying all the food, but you must understand there's so, only so much stock in the grocery store. If you take 10% portion, means 9% may not be able to buy for their daily needs in these 14 days. So if everyone would just think of, hey, maybe I don't, do, don't be so selfish, I just buy this, what I need for these two weeks. If everyone is doing that, it will not have chaos happen in, in this marketplace. And that is only retail. But what about the rest of the business? Can, if all the CEOs and entrepreneurs think generously, which leads to my next point, which what you need to time is generosity. So how can you be generous in this season of time? I know it's not easy. I'm not asking you to crazily and without wisdom and stupidity wise go and give everything. I'm not asking you to do that. But can you add, multiply a little bit of generous? It could be financially, it could be time. Can you be generous with your time? Can you be generous with your knowledge? Can you be generous with your wisdom? So can you be generous at this time and multiply your generosity? If everyone is doing that, this season we can stand through together just like I said some business are negative one zero one two three different impact level if all the business who are in negative one and zero are helping the business with impact of two and three 
we can overcome this together, not only in Malaysia but globally. If everyone is thinking generously, we can overcome this season for a very long time. So that is the third thing. But last but not least is this. Last thing, resources. So how can you divide your resources? I just like I mentioned, if you want to be generous, look at the resources on hand. How can you share it out, the resources? And you guess what? This is not just being generous. This is also being wise and strategic because you can combine all the resources now and do great things together. So sharing resources. So these are the four um, pillars that every business can apply. Plus, minus, and multiply and divide. So these are the things that every business should, can do. And last but not least, I want to share with you these three strategies for any CEOs and entrepreneurs and businesses to do during this season. And when we sit down with all our consultants and coaches and we really ask what can businesses do at this season of time? Actually, there are only three things you can do. Nothing else, there's no four, fourth thing. There are only three strategies you can take in this season of time. So what are the strategies? So a lot of businesses, they don't know what to do. That's why they are panicking and they just wait or they do something stupid. But this is a time that where you can really take wise decision and if you apply it wisely, not only this season of time is bad for you, but it can even transform to become an opportunity. So this is the three strategy. So what can you do in this season of time? So the first thing you can do is this, we learn. This is a time where you can take this season of time to relearn on your business. What do you mean by relearn? It's short, it's training and improvement. So some businesses that they know they can stand for the next 100 days or next 3 months and if they can take this time to retrain and improve their processes and their staff competency and capability, when the season is over, they will come out even stronger. So they are a very beautiful case study for one of the hotels in Taiwan um, and also one of the travel agencies in Taiwan that is um, sharing in the internet. That was one of the big travel agency in Taiwan. That was during SARS 17 years ago, the SARS virus at time. But they have 500 staff and during this season, no one is traveling. So what did they do? In short, they didn't sack anyone. A lot of travel agencies, they sack their staff, they um, cut costs and everything else. But, and they put more of effort in marketing. So what they do is totally opposite. They are the 1%. What they do is that they didn't sack anyone and they cut their marketing budget because they know at this time, no matter how much you market it, no one will travel. And they put that budget into training and improvement budget. So they put a lot of focus into online training. So they train their people how to use the online system to market their business. And not marketing it then, but it's just to train them the processes. And they take the time to deep dive, going into their product and service. Because they are travel agency, they are all the Italy, um, France, the standard Europe route that you have been going for hundreds of years but they didn't improve the route and the way we, where they visit and how they introduce so that is time that all their agents sit down all their people all their team members not sitting in the office but in their individual home but look at how to improve their route and how to make it more interesting so and train them and relearn and improve and deep dive and three months later this, when SARS over their, their sales just shoot up to the rocket. They reach 1 billion revenue in a short one year. And now they have 3,000 staff. Of course, in this season of uh, coronavirus, it hit them badly again, but they're going to take the same strategy. So, but I'm sharing this not only for travel agency, but for many other different industry that you know that you can hold on for the next three, four months. So what can you do now in this season is to take this time to relearn and train your capacity and competency of your staff. So one of my clients is the same. Um, what did they do is that they get their sales staff to look at the closing technique. There are seven top closing techniques and what are the script? They look at their script again, write down the script. What can I do to improve the sales closing rate? And they look at the driver of influence. How can I influence people better to make decisions during the sales call? So they have got to do this for the next 14 days. Can you imagine when they come back to the market, their salesperson just level up, free level, and they will do much more better in their closing skill. So relearn is definitely one strategy. And the second strategy is this, repurpose. So what do you mean by repurpose? There are some businesses that they just really cannot do anything. Um, they cannot afford to stop and just learn and improve. 
their cash flow need to have constantly income. So what I thought about just the first strategy we learned is those companies with enough cash flow to sustain for the next 100 days and or the next three to six months or even one year. But what about some company that I don't have enough cash flow to sustain? I need to continue uh, developing and delivering services and products and continue getting cash in. So these are the companies you need to think of repurpose. What do you mean by repurpose? Another beautiful case study from um, a hotel industry. During the SARS time when it hits, you know the occupancy will drop tremendously. Even right now, the occupancy can drop from 80% to less than 10%. This is a scary uh, um, industry um, to be in during this season. The aviation, the airline, the hotel, the food, the f and those are the retail, those are the industries that get very, very bad hit. So same, this is the same case study where hotel, what do you do? That is a time where people don't come to hotel. Every industry, every hotel is Sacking people, reducing the cost, take unpaid leave or you leave the company, reduce to the best because they have no, they've never thought of how to increase revenue, the plus right, how to plus revenue. No one will come to the hotel so nothing they can do, all they can do is just reduce, they just focus on, like I mentioned just now, they just focus on the minus but like I said, you need to focus on plus, minus, multiply and divide. What are the things they can do? A combination of that will make a lot of difference. If you focus on one, it will not help you. So what they do is just like most of the people in the hotel, they just cut cost, cut cost, cut cost, cut cost, everything about cutting cost. But this CEO do something again very differently. First, he give two orders. The first is, we will not sack anyone. That's the first order. It's in fact, it's easier because you just need to sack anyone, you just continue paying them. But the second order he, he gave was very tough. We cannot lose money. That is a very, very tough thing to do. But what they did was very, very powerful. So they she briefed the team that, yes, we won't sack people, but we cannot lose money. I need everyone here to work with me together and go through this season of time. I need to rewrite every one of your job description. Or the other word, I need to rewrite your role and responsibility. Instead, I need to repurpose. I know your goal, your role is doing this in this company, but I need to repurpose your role at this point of time. Are you okay with this? Of course, every, every staff, I got a job, I got salary, I will do whatever it is with the company. So what he does is, for example, cleaner, he has a group of, a team of cleaner, there's nothing to clean because no one is staying in the hotel. So what he does is that he repurposed them, she sent them out to clean house for other people in the home for the residential. Because in hotel, they have a very strong machine, they can even clean better. In fact, they can even partner with sterilizing company to sterilize the house but they didn't do that sterilizing that time this is the time that if you are a sterilizing company or if you are a hotel you have a team of cleaners this is the right thing to do so what they did is that they send the cleaner to go to the house to do cleaning at least they get some income and what about the room no one is staying in the room so what they did is that they just take out the bed of the in the room and they put a table so every room become a dining room so if you want to come you don't want to have in public you can have dinner in a private room and the chef will cook in the room for you so that was the turnaround for them. And after the SARS, their sales just went up like crazy because it became a habit of the, all the rich people, they always go to the same place to meet up and have dinner there, lunch there, discussion there. It became their habit. So that is another powerful story. They didn't sack anyone and they didn't lose any money. I'm not sure whether they make money that time, but, I'm, but they didn't lose money. They achieved both of their mission. So this is where you need to repurpose. So my question is, in your business, can you think of repurpose? If one company thinks differently and strategize differently and don't follow the 99% but follow the 1% who do things differently, not only you can save your company, you can even save the industry. For all you know, you can even save the whole country or even the whole world. Just one simple action and one simple trick. Last but not least, reinvent. So what do you mean by reinvent? Reinvent is for businesses who really at the level 3 impact. This coronavirus has totally killed their business. So reinvent is really a change of business model, a change of different products and services. It's totally off of your industry, but this is the time that you need to do something about it. I have companies who are in the industry who are badly hit. So what they do is that they need to reinvent whatever resources in the company, they need to think of new things. If you have a programmer, they need to think of an uh, application, they need to program and sell different things even though that's not industry if you have some other resources what are the resources that you have that you can create a new business out of it so this is really totally out of your current core business it's a new model 
Of course, I don't recommend everyone who do this. This is only when really you have no choice. That is the something you need to do. So the question is that, oh, so this three strategy, and you think about it, this is the only three strategy you can do besides running business as usual. That one I don't count as a strategy because that is how you're going to do anyway. But at this season of time, if you really ask, what can I do? What can we do? What can my company do? We learn, we purpose, we invent. There's only three things. There's nothing else you can do. So you just got to choose at this point of time because most of the companies are so panicked, they don't know what to do. So this provides you a direction that you can choose which strategy I want to adopt. And the next question is, can I adopt all three or can I adopt one or two? How should I do it? First, do not adopt all three in, in the same time because you will have not enough resources to do that. No matter how big is a company, if you divide all the resources, you will not able to focus. So my suggestion is this, no matter what situation you are in, out of three, you can choose two. But one of these, it has to be reinvent, but it's only 20%. So means that if you have 100% resources, allocate 20% resources here, and the rest of the 80%, choose one of it. Either you want to be repurposed or you want to relearn, but you're going to focus all 80% in that pillar at this season of time. Of course, after the season, you can divide it out equally, it's up to you. But in this season of time, either option one, you put 20% resources here and choose either 80% relearn or 80% repurpose. Option two, if you are really in the like what I said, you have no choice but to focus on reinvent, then you put 80% of focus in reinvent and 20% on repurpose. Of course, that is the time you cannot relearn anymore. There's no time for you to relearn. Unless you relearn of a new skill to create this product, yes, at this. Else, you're just going to put 20% in repurpose, try to get some cash flow in in the season, but 80% of the focus is to create a new product and service and to transform. So these are the options that you can use. But if you want to have more inquiry, please feel free to contact us. I may not personally attend to all of you, but I will do my best to get my coaching team, my consulting team to um, give you advice on this. And this season of time, as much as we can, we will give you free advice um, to help you to go through this season. So that is our goal. Like I said, I want to put a clear disclaimer. In Malaysia, there are 1.2 million businesses. We are only a so handful of us. We, we were not able to answer to all. So as much as I can, I want to help if you have Really a common theme of question coming in, I might put into another video to one in one go I answer to all of you so everyone can see this. So but if a special case that we can attend to you, we will get our coaching team or consulting team to attend to you. So because everyone there is a framework to use. For reinvent, you have a business model innovation that you can use. We have our 10x business model innovation. For repurpose wise, you can look at blue ocean strategy, how you can um, eliminate, reduce, raise and create at this season of time, create a blue ocean out of your business. And for relearn, you can look at our uh, strategy wheel or business wheel. What are the areas that you want to learn and improve? So every everyone, we have a tool set to cover, but I have not enough time to cover in this video. But this strategy is good enough for you to have a direction because most businesses don't have a direction at this season of time. Now, if you take, take a pause, Step back a little bit, imagine, just close your eyes, imagine that the coronavirus has gone and the world has gone back to the peak and normal, happy, healthy time again. Then we look at this strategy with this lens. Isn't this strategy is applied to all world-class company or all global company? Even in the good time, all the company, they continue invest resource to relearn. They continue to think of new products and services they can repurpose and add value and look at the market, what are they offering? And isn't that have they always allocate 10 to 20% of their company to innovate, to have an innovation team, to R&D, or think of new things to deliver? Isn't all the world-class companies have these three elements? Yes, that's why I can tell you those companies in this season of time, they have a lot of cash reserve to sustain for one to two years. One of my, the company I talked to, they have reserved for 10 years. Means that they say from now, even I don't have any single cents income, I can pay my staff for next 10 years. Of course, without any increment for the next 10 years. Why? Because they have been doing this even when the good time. So those companies who are doing this in the good time, they will not struggle in the bad time. Only 1% of companies in the world are doing this. But that's why I said you can take this season as 
a reflective time and this could be a blessing in disguise. If you take this time to take action on what you can do and do what you can influence and just leave what you cannot do aside because you were not able to do anything anyway. You will just add on anxious and worries in your life. So focus on what you can do and apply this strategy. And once the season is over, guess what? You become a stronger company. And guess what? You slowly you become a world-class company. And when you continue building this, we learn, repurpose, and reinvent. The next crisis come, you will not be a problem. And you are the one who able to add value to others. You can share resources with others. So that is what I want to share with you. I hope by sharing today um, can really help you to not just have an inspiration, not just feel better, but this is the time that I share this with you. We want you to really take action. Then the best gift you can give it to me. This is a, a sharing session. Suppose I want to do it for only our client, but we decided we need to practice what we preach, which is generosity. We need to multiply our generosity. I said, if all our clients survive and winning, but the rest of the market is struggling, in the long term, it will not be good for anyone. So we decided to put it into a video so that everyone can learn this for free. And the best gift you can give it to us in return is to put into action. Not to come to me, just say thank you. I appreciate it, of course, but I will even appreciate if you put what you learn into action, take action. That is the thing that you can, it's the best gift that you can give in return.